What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 18.3 and this might just be one of the most controversial updates in a while. So in this video, we're going to discuss everything new in the update, including the features and changes, the performance, the battery life, and if you should update or not. Okay, so let's start by talking about what's new in this update. Now keep in mind, the main changes are going to be related to Apple intelligence, but since those features are going to be limited to the 15 Pro, and the iPhone 16s, we're gonna start with the non-AI features. So first off, we have a change in the calculator application, and throughout this video, I will have iOS 18.2.1 on the left, 18.3 on the right. So the new feature here is repeat calculation. So this is a feature that was in iOS 17, but for some reason, Apple removed it in iOS 18 up until now. So you can see on iOS 18.2.1, when you type in like five times five, and then if you press equals after you get the result, nothing happens. But now in 18.3, when you tap equals, it repeats that calculation and keeps it going by continuously tapping on equals. We also have a change to screenshots when it comes to taking a full page screenshot. So if you tap on full page here, and of course, when you save this, it will save it as a PDF and you have the option to go down and see what's included in that screenshot. That's not new, but what is new is that when you tap on crop right here and you crop some of this, and then you go to hit done, you'll see that before it just crops that image and that's it. But now in 18.3, when you tap on done, you get a new pop-up that says the cropped content is not removed from the PDF. So basically it's just reminding you that the content outside of the cropped area will not be visible in most PDF viewers, but it can be made visible in some apps. The MacBook AirDrop icon has been updated with the macOS Sequoia wallpaper. You can see on 18.2.1, it still had the old macOS Sonoma wallpaper. The sleep apnea notifications are now enabled and active in Brazil. If you have an iPhone 16 series, we have a couple of changes inside of our settings, camera, and then into camera control. So first off right here, underneath of light press, it's higher up on the page. And we also have a brief description of what that light press consists of what it does right underneath of that. And Apple also finally reworded the clean preview description before it was kind of hard to understand. Now it says allow camera control to hide app controls when lightly pressed. And then below that we have lock focus and exposure. So this is a brand new feature in iOS 18.3, not just a word change. And this allows you to lightly press and hold, then continue touching camera control to maintain focus and exposure. So when we're in the camera application, if we light press and hold on the camera, camera control button and you'll feel that haptic feedback. We're not pressing down, we're just lightly pressing and holding. And if you are on a subject, it will now tell you AE slash AF lock. That stands for auto exposure and auto focus lock. So the exposure won't change and the autofocus will not change as long as you are holding this down lightly as you're moving around for video or for photos. And of course, since we are light pressing on the camera control, if we press all the way down, that will take the photo or you know start or stop the video while we have the autofocus and auto exposure lock you know, on. And if you go down to the bottom of the camera control section, you can see that we have a quick access menu to accessibility that was not there before. So if we tap on that, it just takes us into the accessibility menu a little bit quicker because before you had to go into accessibility and then down here into camera control right here. So the menu itself is the same, just a quicker way to get in there. But there is one additional feature here in accessibility and that is double click speed down here at the bottom. So if you find that you don't double click fast enough to you know invoke whatever action you're trying to do, you can now slow down the rate of which double click is registered. And from this menu, you can test it out. So if you double press, it will register it and it will light up you know, the button as you press it so you can test out your new settings. Oh, and one last thing in the accessibility settings, we have a change to the camera control icon because we now have a dark mode variant. Before that was missing, now we have a dark version of the camera control icon. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the Apple intelligence changes in iOS 18.3 because this is where things get a little bit controversial and a little bit different in unique for Apple, to be honest. So first off, Apple intelligence is now going to be enabled by default after you update to iOS 18.3. So even if you had this turned off completely or you never turned it on to begin with, once you update to 18.3, it will be turned on by default. You will have to manually go in here 
and opt out and turn this off if you do not want to use Apple Intelligence. Now keep in mind that the Apple Intelligence does take up storage space on your device. So if you disable this, you will not regain that storage space back. So just keep that in mind. Even if you have Apple Intelligence off, you're still gonna have Apple Intelligence taking up storage space on your iPhone. Now we also get a nice change to notification summaries. So you'll notice that on iOS 18.3 on the right, the text for that notification summary is now italicized. So it's in italics instead of blending in with every other notification that has regular text. So now your notification summaries will stand out a bit more from all your other notifications on your lock screen. I like that change. And then here from the lock screen, if you have a notification summary and you swipe over on it and you go into the options, I just accidentally got rid of that one. But if you go into options right here, you will see some changes here as well. So you can now turn off summaries for that specific app straight from the options from your lock screen. You no longer need to go into the settings to do that. But not everything is good when it comes to notification summaries because here's something interesting that Apple does not do very often. So if you go into your settings and go into notifications and then into summarize notifications, you might notice a change right away. So first off, you'll see that we have new text that says summaries may contain errors. So before Apple Apple just said summary accuracy may vary based on content, but now they did a line break and said that summaries may contain errors. But that's not all, because if you go down on iOS 18.3, you'll see that for like ESPN, for example, we have text underneath of it that says temporarily unavailable. And here's the reason. If we turn off summarize notifications and then turn it back on, we now get a new splash screen and kind of a setup. Before, if you turned it off and back on, it wouldn't do anything. Now you get this right here that says summarize notifications and it does tell you beta up top. Also, it says that this beta feature will occasionally make mistakes that could misrepresent the meaning of the original notification. Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that Apple is doing this. They're adding beta and saying that there could be mistakes because the BBC and other publications have been calling Apple out for basically making fake headlines with the summarize notification feature. So if you get a bunch of notifications from the news application and you know it summarizes them, sometimes it would show you an inaccurate, you know, title for that notification. And they've been called out multiple times by the BBC, which is kind of ironic because their headlines are sometimes misleading. But nonetheless, if you go to choose notifications to summarize and you select news and entertainment, check this out. It now says temporarily unavailable. Summaries will automatically appear when available. And then even right here, it says at the bottom, this is a beta feature. Summaries may contain error. So Apple is going all out trying to make it very abundantly clear that there can be issues with these notification summaries. And that's just AI as a whole. It's not even just an Apple thing. It's just AI as a whole is not perfect. And a lot of these notifications were being taken as you know the, the truth and as it should be. I mean, it's a notification on your lock screen. So so Apple's just making it clear that, you know, they're not going to be able to have notification summaries for news applications. And you can even see the apps that you have installed there are not going to get these summaries. So news, Reddit, TV, ESPN, podcasts, YouTube, none of those will get summaries because of, you know, what Apple's been called out for, for putting in you know, fake headlines. They're not really putting them in. It's just the AI hallucinating and making a mistake interpreting the headline. So anyways, if you go to summarize selected notifications, you will notice that we do have the temporarily unavailable tag underneath of those select ones. So news, Reddit, TV, YouTube, you can see them all right there. Now, Apple does not say when these notification summaries will be returning for these news applications, but you know it could come via an over there update or it could come in a later iOS 18 version. So we'll have to wait and see on that. I will keep you posted. Anyways, moving on to some more positive news and features here with iOS 18.3, we have a couple of pretty big changes to visual intelligence. So if you press and hold on the side button right here, the camera control button, it will launch visual intelligence intelligence and we now have a new feature where you can add an event to calendar 
from a poster or a flyer. So here's a poster with a location and a date and a time. And if you hold your iPhone up to something like this, a poster or a flyer, you will see the prompt to schedule that event in your calendar with just one tap. You tap that and it will add it to your calendar. And then after you add that event to your calendar and you tap on it right here, you can see that it also includes the original image that you scanned to get this event into your calendar. So that is pretty awesome. And then we also have another visual intelligence feature for easily identifying plants and animals. So if I hold my phone up to this plant here, you can see that it will automatically identify the plant and it will show me in real time what type of plant that is and then I could just tap right here to see more information and it's cool because you can go from plant to plant and it will update in real time live up there based on what you're pointing at your camera at and then you could also do this with animals so if you hold your phone your camera up to a dog or a cat you can see that it will identify the breed of that dog or that cat and again it's all live in real time now now, this is amazing and keep in mind this is different from the ChatGPT integration and the Google image search feature which are the ask and the search right here because again this happens live and without needing to tap on the capture button to actually take a photo so it's now similar to what you get when you scan buildings or restaurants you know to get the menu and everything like that it's like that now for plants and animals pretty amazing stuff I think visual intelligence is one of the most underrated features on the iPhone 16 and one of the most underrated Apple intelligence features in general now also if we go into messages and tap on the plus on the left hand side you'll see that we now have an icon for Gen Moji. so we can now quickly access access Genmoji from the sidebar right here. We could not do that before. Now we also have a couple of bug fixes here in iOS 18.3. So the first one fixes an issue where the keyboard might disappear when initiating a type to Siri request. So if you type to Siri like this, sometimes the keyboard would just not appear. That has been fixed with 18.3. And then we also have an issue with Apple Music, where if you play a song and then you close out of the Apple Music application, it will continue playing that song until that song ends even when you had it closed so if you had that issue that's also been resolved and then there's also a fix for the tiny Apple logo bug when updating the iPhone 16 Pro Max sometimes the Apple logo would be really small in the middle now it's back to normal size now when it comes to the performance and the battery life performance on iOS 18.3 has been really solid iOS 18.3 is a nice step up in performance for me on my 16 Pro Max coming from 18.2.1 so I have no Notice a minor bump in performance not nothing crazy but you can see that we did score a decent score here on Geekbench so at 35 13 single core 86 95 on the multi core you can see kind of how that compares right here so pretty solid results in terms of performance and as far as battery life goes you can see just from the start of this video I'm down to 87 percent which is pretty good so I do think that battery life has also seen a minor bump here from 18.2.1 so if you're on a previous version especially if you had battery drain you might want to update to 18.3 because it could resolve that I've had a pretty good time with battery life here so far so with that being said should you update to iOS 18.3 and I would say yes especially if you have an Apple intelligence supported device more specifically an iPhone 16 series since you get those really amazing visual intelligence features and everything else but even if you don't have you know a Apple intelligence supported device I do think that it's also worth updating just because bug fixes are nice and of course some of those other minor changes aren't going to change your life but they are pretty nice to have and of course you will have some security patches as well Apple has not published those security patches as of the time of recording but that's always good reason to stay updated that way you keep your device as secure as possible and of course if you had any battery drain issues or a buggy experience in terms of performance you may want to go ahead and update as well because that could be resolved and if you were disappointed with iOS 18.3 just wait for iOS 18.4 because that's going to be coming out within the next couple of months I will be covering all of the beta features and changes here on the channel so make sure you subscribe for that but that's going to be a big update especially if you have an Apple intelligence supported device because of the new Siri changes that are coming this is going to be not the full Siri 2.0 but we are going to get some really nice Siri enhancements anyways guys that's it that is iOS 18.3 hope you enjoyed this video if you did as always give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below with your favorite feature or your you know least favorite feature since a lot of these are going to be kind of controversial so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below be 
sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS update videos just like this one. That is my specialty here on the channel. So be sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss those in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.